थैंक यू हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन प्लीज कॉल मी अब्बास ओके सो माई टॉपिक टूडे इज टाइडी अप योर कोड राइटिंग लेजिबल कोड नो वॉट डू यून बाई लेजिबल एनी वन आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक दिस सेशन अ बिट इंट्रैक्टिव सो प्लीज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट वॉट इज लेजिबल कोड readable a code that is readable by not just you but by other developers and other people as well so let's see how we can achieve this hi my name is abbas ali and i run a development company called as rainium systems we are located in nagpur and we are a team of around 40 45 developers here we i have been working in php since 2004 that's almost 18 years now our primary focus is uh creating bespoke products using laravel framework as well as we take on other technologies like wordpress drupal joomla magento and all those things so let's start what is readable code readable code is a code that clearly communicates its intent to the reader now why is this important why should your code communicate with you right we'll see first let's try to understand what is a good code a good code is a code that works right that is the most important quality your code should work as expected without any bugs otherwise it we cannot call it a good code then your code should be readable and understandable by everyone including new developers junior developers it shouldn't happen that the code that you write is only readable by yourself and no one else so even i mean kids should be able to read and understand what's written so that is what is a good code and why it is important to make your code readable yeah to collaborate with the team one that we want our code not just to be readable by by us but also by some other development team who may pick up our product who may pick up our code base and work on it let's say 6 months down the line not just that but also most of the times what happens we write some code the project is delivered and then we forget it then the client comes back to us he asks for some changes he asks to add new features and if we read our own code let's say after one year we are not able to understand a bit of it that shouldn't happen so you should write in the first place you should write the code such that it is readable by not just by other people but by also uh, by yourself as well after a period of time so let's see how we can make our code more readable more legible first we'll try to improve the appearance of the code without changing the code just by making some appearing uh, cosmetic changes we can make our code look better and readable appearance as you know is the single most important thing as a human being we also want to appear best why so that other people's other people like us similarly our code should also look best should appear good so that the other developers who are looking at it they like it how to make the code uh, how to uh, make the code appear better we'll start with formatting first is following certain coding standards in php world we have psr coding in standards how many of you know psr coding standards and i hope you all are following the same as well right so one should follow the standard coding conventions that makes sure that your code is consistent the most important thing is your code should be consistent throughout it shouldn't happen that you are following some other conventions in one file one class and in another file you are following some other convention that will make your code very hard to read 
also following coding conventions makes your uh, formats your code better and lastly it makes your code php cs fixer what does it do this is a tool a script that will read your code and it will make sure that it follows the standard convention it will rewrite the code for you automatically so i highly recommend that when you go try php cs fixer it it has plugins for all the languages or uh, not all the languages sorry all the frameworks all the cmss including wordpress so if you're writing code use php cs fixer to fix your code it also has uh, vs code plugins php storm plugins as well available for php cs fixer so after formatting comes spacing adding some spaces in your code it will make your code more readable let's see this is a function a very simple function as you can see everything looks a bit messed up sab kuch ekdam pass pass mein it is not readable but if we add some spaces we are not going to change any code we are just going to add some spaces much more readable now or no so always add spacing it gives your code breathing room spacing doesn't cost a thing it's not like that adding spaces will make your code run slower that never happens so put ample spaces in your code especially before and after each block this is a block of code this is a block of code so whenever you are starting a new block of code make sure you add spaces before and after that block that will give the your code a much needed breathing room next to make your code appear better again a very simple function we are fetching some data from database and then returning that user this is a very small function I, uh, there was a lack of space that's why i wrote a very small function but assume that this is a big function with 10 15 lines okay if you are just glancing this code it is very hard to understand whether this function is returning something or not because this return statement is getting lost in all this code it is not readable so again just adding one empty line before your return statement this return now stands out now you can quickly see what your function is returning so always add one empty line before your return statements one thing i forgot to tell you all these whatever i am saying whatever you have been doing it's not like that you have been doing it wrong this is a opinionated uh, talk wherein what i like i am telling you it's entirely up to you of course you might be having some better ideas so yeah just wanted to put that out <laughs> then uh return early what this means here we have a function we are getting a uh, id as a parameter then we are fetching uh, fetching the user from database if we are finding that user then we are performing the logic if we are not able to find the user then this is a negative test case this is a negative case right return false again this is a short function but this can be a very big if block right this if block can have 10 15 lines your main program uh, your main business logic now why this is a bit hard to read because if this if is very big then you to see what's happening in else you'll have to scroll down a lot right now we can change this a bit and make it much more readable what we are doing now here we are returning early return from your functions early that means whatever negative cases are there handle them first in your function calls in programming you should always for example when we are processing a form right the request comes in the first thing that we do is validation right similarly any other negative test cases should be handled 
at the top in your function and rest of the code can be the main business logic. So this avoids the else clause because if this fails, we are returning early. This makes this entire code much more readable. You know what will fail this function. This will fail this function. And you can know right at the top. Next, we'll see how we can arrange the variables so that they are more readable. Here's an example. People at the back can see the code, right? It is readable. We are creating two dates, start and end date, right? But if I ask you, let me know what the date is. Who can say what the date is? Start date and end date? Thoda time lagenga, right? Because, sorry. Start day is here, year is here, and month is here. Then day, end day, end year, end month. To form the date, you have to look up and down, up and down. So instead of this, just rearrange the variables. And now, and also arrange them in the uh, proper order so that you can instantly read what the date is. Now we can say it is 2nd April 2022, start date, and end date is 3rd June 2023. Very easily readable, just by rearranging the variables. So we are done with uh, appearance. Now let's see the next topic, nomenclature. What is nomenclature? Naming things, right? Nomenclature is naming things. This is uh, one of the very uh, famous computer programmer from the old days, he has said, there are only two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. Naming things is really tough. It's not easy. Both easy lagta hai, it seems easy, but it is, it is not easy at all. How to name your classes, how to name your variables, how to name your files. Why naming matters? Naming is communication. How do you communicate with people? By calling their names, right? Similarly, to communicate with your code, you need to have proper names to your functions, methods, classes, and files. Code with obfuscated names is hard to read and understand. If you give, let's say, if you everywhere you use $A, $B, $C, <laughs> will you be able to read your code, understand what's happening? No. So. Proper code makes your code of proper naming makes your code readable. And of course, if you give your methods or classes names properly, then people can understand what's happening just by reading the names. They don't even need to look at the logic, the entire code. Right? Create user class. Just by name, people will know, okay, this class is responsible for creating a new user. They don't have to read the entire code. But if your class name is just, let's say, user, then they won't know what's happening, even though it is creating the user. Who's this guy? He is the one who is trying to read someone else's code and they have given very bad namings to their variables functions. So he's frustrated completely. <coughs> now how to name things? We need to use proper language. First and foremost, always use English language while coding. Your code should always be in English. Why? I'm not here to promote one language, but English is the standard in the entire world when it comes to programming. I know nowadays many programming languages or uh, editors and everything supports emojis and UTF-8 characters. You can use those to name your variables and classes, but don't do it. It is okay for fun, but not good in practicality. 
always use plain, simple English language, not just to name your functions, methods, variables, but also to name your, what to say, uh, but also to write your comments. Comments should also be in English. Choose your words. Words means how you name. Choose that properly. When you're, for example, you're writing a class or a function, think about it. What you want to do in that method? What you, do, you want to do in that class? Come up with a name for that. Don't haste into naming things. Take Google's help to search for synonyms. I'll give an example. For example, uh, you, you are dealing with head of a school. You want to write a class which represents head of the school. So you can name the class as head of school. Easy. Correct? But if you think properly, give it a minute, then you can come up with a better name. What is the name of the head of a school? Principal. A single word. This was an easy example, but in many cases, for example, you are building a feature wherein you are logging in as another user. You're building a feature to log in as your super admin and you're logging in as another user. So what will you name this function or class name? Guest. Guest. No, no, you're authenticating as someone else. With user. Switch user. Yeah, that can be a name, but a better name, a synonym for this phrase is impersonate. You are impersonating as someone else. So your class or function name should be impersonate. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, if you are de dealing with photos, videos, audios, what will you name that class or file, whatever? Photos and videos, photos underscore videos? Media. Media. So think in this manner. Give it a moment, search on Google, the phrase in your mind, put that in Google, search for it, it will show you the single word synonyms. Use those. Then, <coughs> remove redundant words. Sometimes we tend to add some words to the functions or methods or file names which are not needed at all. Example, we can have a function called as create underscore new underscore user. Create new user. Seems innocuous, harmful lagta idda, na? create new user. But the new word is not needed at all. Create, creating means new, something new. So it should be just, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> It should be just create user. No need for the word new there. So like this, you can get rid of a lot of redundant words as well. Then avoid abbreviations in your code. We have very simple function, everyone's favorite. Calculate. Salary. Dollar B, dollar HRA, dollar TA, dollar Inc, dollar TDS, this is good. But what is dollar B? What is TA? What is Inc? If someone new who doesn't know this, how salaries are calculated, what are the different components of salaries, they won't be able to understand this. <coughs> so you should avoid abbreviations when they are not needed. So it should actually be not dollar B, but dollar Basic, basic salary. Travel at TA ke badle, travel allowance. Instead of dollar INC, write full words, incentive. But you can see I haven't changed house it allowance. It is still HRA. Why? Because this is an accepted acronym for house it allowance. Everyone knows it is known as HRA. So you should make that judgment ke which Acronyms will make sense to other and which acronyms may not. No one calls basic salary as just B. They call it as basic salary only, right? That's why you should write basic salary. Similarly, TDS, everyone knows TDS is an accepted acronym. <coughs> A 
prefix variables and methods what this means here's a we have a, a very simple function we are fetching a to do from database and then this is the method uh, we are calling a method called as completed on to do object but just by reading this we don't know what this completed method is doing whether it is marking the to do as completed or whether it is determining whether this to do has been completed or not it can be both this may be changing data in database or it may be returning something reading something so if we just add simple prefixes it will make it much more readable to do is completed now just by reading this you know it is determining from the database fetching from database whether whether this to do is readable or not it will return true or false you will also know what the what is the return of return type is completed so return type must be a boolean true or false <coughs> similarly uh, you can add prefixes to function here we have two func two methods functions find user and find remote user now the difference between these two functions are this is finding the user running a sql query on local database and fetching the user this is getting the details of this user from some remote service it can be an api or some external service xyz now i have named it to find remote that is why you can understand that it is doing from remote but in real world we don't uh, generally use remote word okay we use something else find user something now you can follow a certain convention so that you are able to understand whether this reading is happening from local database or from some remote service for that whenever reading from local database you can use the prefix get get underscore user this will always mean that you are reading from local database getting from local database and if you are reading from some remote service then use the word fetch browser may be ajax calls ke liye fetch hi use karte hai na fetch so just following that same convention fetch means fetching from some external service external api what is wrong here first underscore name this is snake case this is camel case this is pascal case the programmer has used all sort of different naming conventions in the same file or same code never do that whatever convention you are using whether it, it is a snake case or camel case stick to it i have seen this many time people are using ek jagah pe underscore dusri jagah pe camel case don't do that <laughs> be consistent whatever convention you want to use but be consistent with naming variables and methods uh this is a trick that i uh, commonly use uh, use time stamps instead of booleans many times we want to store in database whether a particular thing is completed or published for example blog post is published or not whether something is deleted or not active or not so we put it in a boolean field in database and we name it as such completed okay this is fine we can know whether this is completed or not but we will not be able to know when was it completed for that we'll have to add a another field date time to store this information right if, if you are completing something when is it completed what time it was completed so instead of adding two different fields you can what you can do is just use a single field timestamp field called as completed at and its default value in database should be null 
So if it's completed at timestamp field is null in database, it means that thing is not completed. If it has a value, a timestamp, then it means it is completed, it was completed, and it was completed at that time. So, ek tir se do shikar. Now the last section, I guess, is code format and refactor. We'll see how we can refactor our code to make it more readable. Only if there was no else. As I said earlier, always try to avoid else's. Else likna chhunda hai apne ko. See this code. If ke under if else bahar else. This is very small code, a small function, but I have seen five, six, if, 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 and then else, 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 else. Makes your code very hard to read. What's happening here? If the user is active, then we are checking if he is subscribed or not. If he is subscribed, we are sending him a subscription email. If he is not subscribed, then we are sending him a marketing email. Okay? And if user is not active, then we are sending him an activation email. We will refactor this code. It will do exactly the same thing, but the code will look better. No else's. If this is not active, this was the negative test case. Again, the, what we saw in the beginning. Always handle the negative things first in your methods. If user is not active, we are returning early. Again, the same rule, return early. Sending the activation email and returning early. Then, if user has subscribed, then we are sending the subscription email and returning from here. So no need to write else. And lastly, if both of these fail, then we are sending the marketing email. Just by refactoring, now code is much more readable. This also reduces the cyclomatic complexity. What is cyclomatic complexity? Anyone? Cyclomatic complexity. Yeah, correct. Number of paths the code might execution might have to take. Basically, jitne under if 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 hote jayenge, jitna indentation bharte jayenga, your code's cyclomatic complexity will keep increasing. And your aim should be to reduce the cyclomatic complexity, to reduce the indentation of your code. The more your code is indented, apna indent karte na har block ke andar jaake andar andar shift hote jaate hai. Try to reduce that. One or two levels at the most. Refactor your code. If you see three or four levels, refactor it. A very simple <coughs> thing to do. This is a class. Uh, we are updating something, we are destroying something, deleting something, and we are creating something. But the order is not correct. Where we are defining the method, the order is not proper. If you want, if you are reading this class, pehle update ho gaya, create hone ke pehle update ho gaya. So, make sure your method ordering in a class is proper. We are first create, then update, and then delete. Again, this this will not affect the execution of the code. This is just for your own reading. That so that it, your code is readable. And now, this is the big piece of code. No, this is a small one. If condition, we are checking one, two, and three conditions, and then starting the subscription. And these are all common conditions. User is active or not, user is deleted or not, admin or not. So you can refactor this, put all those things in a function, and simply can subscribe, then start subscription. Also, note the prefixes I have used. Not user arrow uh, subscribe, it is can subscribe. So this prefix is also important. Can do something, if yes, then do that thing. A big piece of code now. 
this is a function save. We are uh, fetching some products from remote service. Then uh, we are decoding it. We are running a loop on whatever data we got from this remote service, products data. We are inserting them one by one each product in database. And then we are also downloading the product images and saving it at this path. Basically, we are fetching products from a remote service and storing that information in our own database. Okay. logic This is one logic, one piece of code. A single feature. But don't write the a big method at all. Your methods should never be more than five, ten lines. Try to stick to very few lines per each method. Reason being that makes your code, if you split your code into multiple methods, that makes your code modular and testable. You can test each functions separately. So let's see how we can make this code modular. So firstly, we were fetching something from remote service. So we'll create a function called as fetch products and we are fetching from that remote fun service and returning that JSON from this function. Then we were running the loop on that JSON uh, object and inserting one product at a time in database. So we'll create another function, save products, run a loop, save it in database. And then we were running for each can the for each open log. We were running for each inside for each. So that was increasing the cyclomatic complexity. So what we did, the second for each for saving the product images, we extracted into a separate function. Save product images. And in that we are running the for each to save the images in on disk and as well as in database. And now the original method save, which earlier was quite unreadable. Now let's see how it becomes. Just this. And it is completely readable. You know we are fetching products and saving products. Now Smart variable assignment. This is the last thing, I guess. I will not bore you any longer. <laughs> we are getting a user from database. If we didn't find that user, then we are returning false. Else we are running some method on that user object. Now what does smart variable assignment mean? It means there is a variable assignment here and it can be done smartly so that we can save few lines of code. How? We can put that variable assignment, variable assignment inside this if condition itself. If this returns false, uh, then this condition will be true and we will return false else we run some method. So that was all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Uh, please, if you like my, like my talk, please follow me on Twitter. And this is, I'm Abbas Ali on GitHub. And one additional thing before I go, as I told you, I am primarily a Laravel developer, Laravel PHP developer. And I'm also very much active in Laravel community. And uh, one of the organizers for Laracon India, this is the official Laravel conference, national conference happening in Ahmedabad on 25th and 26th February. All the core people from Laravel framework development team they are attending this, they are attending this conference as speakers. So I will invite you all to please, if you want to learn more about Laracon, Laravel, please do come. You can find more information at Laracon in. And please follow us on 
Twitter, again, Laracon. And if you have your mobiles in your hand, please go ahead and follow right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I run a local community, Laravel community in Nagpur, called as Laravel Nagpur. And we run monthly meetups. We have been doing this since past four years now. Over 40, 45 meetups uh, have been conducted till now. And we make sure that we, it, is, it happens every month without fail. So if people are from, I, I believe most of you are from Nagpur. If you're interested in learning more about Laravel, it, but it is called as Laravel, but it is basically all thing around web development, be it PHP, WordPress, other CMSs, even other web technologies like Vue.js, React.js, XYZ. Anything that is related to web development, we have talks and presentations on that, and we have discussions on that every month. So please, again, visit Laravel Nagpur, see when the next upcoming event is, and try to attend the same. That's it. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, please ask me now. Thank you.